Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Swinging at Shins, your Premier League podcast stateside. As Brett's hacking up a lung, hopefully he can make it through the rest of this episode. Um, send him good good vibes right yeah, now. Yeah, I got he, he kinda needs that. Hopefully by the time this is out, I'll be fine. I, I hope so. On the up. I, have de- I have definitely been on the up, which I think speaks more to how sick I was. Yeah. Well, I mean, Atlanta will do that to you. And also work sh- doing workshops for your business job thing. Yeah, being sick, being not quite over being sick and waking up at 3.30 in the morning to make a flight to then do long workshops all day Mm -hmm. and then try to see some of the city and then go to a super dry hotel. Yeah, no, I I didn't take care of myself. I wasn't given a great chance to take care of myself. Our soul didn't take care of themselves. Oh, hey, I see you got a new computer chair, too. Nice. I do, because my old one... um, My old one I got because I was really into iRacing at the time. Yes, you were. You could lock it, and you you were constantly pushing against the back. Yeah. And I just wore down one of the bolts. I'm not a small guy anyway. And I did this and leaned back in my chair when uh, Rachel came in one day, and the whole chair just went... (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. So now I'm on Team Secret Lab. Hell yeah, Team Secret Lab. Let's, hey, uh, Secret Lab. If you're, if there's any employees listening, uh, we'll definitely sponsor you guys. Anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here for for the Premier League, and we are just gonna skip over Match Day Eight like it didn't even happen, and we're gonna discuss about Match Day Nine instead. Um, but good things happen Match Day. I don't remember, and it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> if you haven't already, please like follow subscribe thumbs up you know all that really good stuff that'll help us you know get get us out there in the world um we would greatly appreciate that but match week would you really want to talk about match week eight because i don't remember it all that well real quick tottenham lost arsenal won uh that you week. had that crazy draw to villa i mean the you mean villa man united had the crazy draw with man united the snorf where practically. United looked like they actually knew how to play defense. Question mark. That that's because uh, Chelsea Nottingham. drew to Nottingham and Wolves cemented the fact that they're not a good team. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gary O'Neill's going to get sacked eventually, but yep. That's Gary O'Neill's problem and the Wolves' problem in general. Anyway, um, on to match day nine. Hell yeah, match day nine. We love match day nine for no, some of don't. us anyway. Oh, sorry. I know you'd be happy because I was happy because I don't. You you were the only. You're like the only Villa fan who takes it this seriously. I well, you know what? They held us back for one more year. Probably would have gotten relegated just like they did that year anyway. But Uh that's not the point. Mm -hmm. The point is, is I can still hang my head on saying F Fulham forever, or at least until I feel good about it. This week is why I know that Wolves isn't that good, and I don't care what happened in the City game. Wolves lost five to three to Brentford match day before this. Yep. Brentford lost two one to a United team that looked like it was a mess again after the Villa game. Yep. Like they played up to Villa and then they looked like hot garbage. I couldn't believe the score line when it finally ended two one. It did yeah, not deserve to end that. Way. That was that was a weird. I don't think anybody deserved to win that match in particular. They probably deserved a draw to be honest, but. You know, United found a way to win, I guess, and that's good for the fans. I guess. Well, I mean, they didn't get what they (laughs) truthfully wanted, which was Eric Ten Hag canned, but you get to live with them for another match. Probably until Um, Christmas, to be honest. Leicester took care of business against Southampton. Again, I'm beginning to wonder if the points deduction is ever actually going to happen. It might happen at the end of the season. They might get slammed. That would be brutal. That would be it, brutal. That almost happened to Villa, and that's why they had to end up selling Douglas Louise and I I, I, I know, but it things. didn't. It didn't. Can you imagine if they see how far away they are from relegation and relegate them that many points? Oof. Oof. That's a big That's movie. conspiracy talk. Absolutely. You got my I, tinfoil hat on. Who would like if it was Everton or you know, a long stay, mainstay kind of Premier League team that's sitting 18th and, you know, uh, 
Leicester City is sitting 17th, and they're like, ah, let's make this happen where we keep the other other long mainstay yep. up. I, God, that would be such a shit. It, it won't happen. happen. It'll destroy the league. Oh, God. Well, I mean, Man City's already done that anyway, but that's not the point. <laughs> Speaking of the league being destroyed from within, I, I want your reaction. Is yeah, Saliba's yeah. red card a deserved red? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think there's still way too many variables that were that could have happened. That's what variables mean. I mean, for it to be a clear shot on goal, a clear run on goal. <coughs> well, what I'm upset about is realistically two things. The fact that the <coughs> announcers were like, oh, yeah, David Rea retreating makes it more of a red because then there's nobody else to really cover other than um, Big Gabby. And I'm like, yeah, but also he was offside. So it, Also, the I, I watched that crap happen. Rodri does this five times a season. Not this. Lunawan does this uh, all the time. He, they they do it. They they just City has perfected the art of the midfield tackle. That's bullshit. And half the time they don't even give the card. On top of that, I'm not even convinced that Saliba actually tried to pull him down. I really think that they did come together. I don't know about that. There was an arm over their shoulder. And... I know, but the thing is, that's how the game's played in so many ways. There's an arm over the shoulder. And yes, that is to slow him down. But also, they ran, the legs like ran into each other. Here's my other issue with this. Why did this go to VAR? VAR is supposed to be for clear mistakes. I think because it was the whole last man, last alleged Why last didn't man Liverpool defense. Chelsea go to VAR? I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to think of it. It was practically did. a carbon copy. I it was practically okay. a carbon copy of the play. Here's my problem: is that if if Saliba's was a yellow, then I'm obviously okay with Tosin's being a yellow as well. Mm -hmm. But since one was a red and the other one was a yellow, one makes Tosin's looks a little bit more. Uh, he absolutely has to be a red. If that's how we're playing this, if it Saliba's makes it more is debatable. Red, is the problem? If it makes Saliba's it more is a red, then if Saliba's was a red, then Tosin's was a red. If that's how we're gonna play it, fine. But again, like we've been saying all year with this, it's almost like it's two different games. Well, look at look at look at what it takes to get a yellow card for delay of game. I think the only argument that that Tosin had was the fact that Reese James, albeit could have probably torn a hamstring while making the recovery, could have inhibited the play or at least recovered. And I don't and this is why and this is why I think both should have been yellows. It's because we don't know if Big Gabby could have we as in Premier League fans. Not just I'm not an Arsenal fan, but we don't know if Big Gabby could have gotten back and recovered and made a shoulder to shoulder tackle on I don't remember who actually was it doesn't matter irrelevant um to then knock him off the ball. We don't yeah. know if Raya comes out and makes a save. I'm not even we don't. he was on side. Which is why it's so hard to make that call 45 yards away from goal. And I'm not even certain he could have fudged it up. He's, yeah. he's going to make a 45-yard run. You got a bounding ball, 45-yard run at an angle to pick this thing up. Let's say Saliba doesn't tackle him. Because here's the other problem that I have with this logic. Let's say Saliba doesn't touch him. 
Is he going to even beat Saliba? I get that Saliba's the one that tackled him, but if we're going to say, you know, this is the one where the guys break, the point of the rule, the rules as intended on this, is the guy's breaking away from you and you take out his legs in a last ditch effort to make sure he doesn't get a one-on-one with your bully. That's what this is supposed to stop. And you cannot tell me that this situation was that. Neither was Tosin's. You know, it's it's the same thing. It's why City does it all the time at midfield. When a break's yeah. about to happen and they take him out. Because you can't say that, yeah, that's a clear one-on-one chance. Because it's not. There's a 50-yard line. There's nothing clear about it. You got half a field. This yeah. is now against Bournemouth, Brighton, and City. We've had to play a man down for more than a half in every mm-hmm. single game. You know, I people are talking about bottle jobs and all this like they like to. Are you kidding me? We're 17 points. We're four points off the top after eight games, and we've had to play with that many red cards. Yeah. We're amazing. Maybe, you know, maybe we, just Arsenal is ill-disciplined. You know what? I would – if all the red cards were like this, I could, I could see you make the argument of quit fouling the guy. The Declan Rice thing was such bullshit. I will never get over that. I I, have, in, the I, worst I part been. is that was an illegal restart of the game. Yeah, The guy couldn't have kicked the ball. And the only reason why a card got pulled out of anyone's pocket was because he took out Rice. Something if he Chris doesn't Kavanaugh. take out Rice and he just stops the ball, yes, yeah, Chris Kavanaugh. If he doesn't take out Rice and he just resets the ball and kicks it, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. But because Rice gets his legs taken out, now a card has to come out. But he doesn't want to penalize the one guy, so he penalizes yet. Like, what are we talking about? You could not have restarted play. The ball was moving. Yeah. And then, I, you know what? If if the ref will come out and say that he gave Trissard a second yellow for the challenge in the City match, mm-hmm. I'd buy it. But if he gave him a second yellow because that was a delay of game, I'm going to lose my mind. <laughs> there have been Is that... Some- that's some BS. There have been some very odd calls against Arsenal, and by no means am I fully backing Arsenal because I also, as a Villa fan, would like to be ahead of Arsenal because I would like to also, dare I say, win the league because this has been the most open the league could possibly be. Easy with your eye roll. About no, right I'm not. I'm eye rolling because you're saying that the league's open and – the top team has 21 points through eight matches, and Jesus Christ, if this is the most open that the league's been in years, this league is top-heavy. I just mean that the fact that City isn't the de facto number one by nine rounds through. Yeah, don't that's, worry. that's what I'm they'll trying go to get. On a, they'll go on a 20 and 0 stretch. And I know. It isn't March. January yet. Ugh. And don't get me wrong, Liverpool is doing... I honestly think we've been kind of glossing over Liverpool's success a little bit, but they also still haven't proven to either of us that they've faced um, manageable teams. They've done enough. They've done exactly what they... Oh, they've won their games, apart from the one against Forest. They've won their games, absolutely. Uh, Saliba's now out for the Liverpool match. It looks like Saka's going to be out. We're not going to have other. So, and you were you just know, saying, too, just before the international break, too. Yeah, uh, you didn't yeah. send enough out, did you? No, nope, that sucks. Nope. I don't know what's going to happen. That truthfully, you know, I it's it's at home, thank Christ. Yeah. And I still think that there's a decent chance that we do get out of there with three points because I think we have a very good team. And I think that a lot of the people that need to come in and play in gel, like Mourinho, uh, can do that. But the problem is if Calafiori is out too because he picked up an injury against Shakhtar, Ah. hopefully Timber's back. Mm -hmm. You know, but we have Odegaard, Calafiori, Timber, Saka, and Saliba all out. Mm Mm-hmm. You can make an argument that that's one, two, three, four, five starters. It's probably four starters. I, I mean, on Arsenal, it's definitely your four starters right there. But I, for the other teams, it definitely would be all of them would be starters. So, 
So that's, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen in this match. I feel like this is the type of match that we have been getting ready for. I feel like this is the type of match that we've been preparing for. Well, definitely with the 1-0 win against Shakhtar. No, I mean yeah, like Arteta as a whole to build the team to be able to play up against the Liverpool even when you're injured. Yes, never mind. I see what you're saying. The I issue that saying. we're going to have is left back. Yeah. yeah. You know, I Kivior cannot be on Salah. Hey, if if Alex Marino can do it, anybody can do it. That guy I watched Kivior try to do it in back. Philly. He can't do it. <laughs> Zinchenko, too. He, he's a tough watch. Oh. So if Timber can start on the left, we might be all right. We might be all right. Well, you know, I, I I could see us winning this game, and I guess that's a testament to how far we've come. Sure. That with all these injuries, I can still see it, but I'm not confident. Okay. I, <laughs> if it's, it's still a better chance than what you would have had in recent past. And it just keeps getting better, so it's always more confidence building towards each year, building towards that championship. Or a hopeful championship. I shouldn't just give it away immediately because clearly the PGMOL doesn't want Arsenal winning. <laughs> clearly. clearly. Yeah. You heard it here first. There's a grand <laughs> conspiracy. Tim Will hats on. Uh, oh, gosh darn it. Anyway. Uh, so Liverpool did manage to beat Chelsea 2 1. They did. I. This match. I don't know what to think of this match. I mean, we'll look at it. Reese James didn't get injured, so they got that going for them. They didn't play 20 minutes, <laughs> blow out a leg or something like that, so that's good. Um, no, honestly, somehow he transferred it to Jota instead. <sighs> yeah, right? It's like, it's like a touch thing. You get yeah. injured now. <laughs> um. No, I, I, I can't remember. I can't recall if Curtis Jones has been <laughs> out for a while for Liverpool because I just I don't I don't remember. But he definitely looks like the cog that they needed to just be able to win balls in the opponent's midfield and then break them down from there because they look like a completely different. Like, well, they looked like. Jurgen Klopp side essentially, win balls up high, turn it over into goals. Your uh, speaker, Mike. He played eighty-one minutes against Chelsea, eighty-nine minutes against Palace, and ninety minutes against West Ham. Okay, in a Carabao Cup match. So he's so he really hasn't been playing all that much. Sure. Oh, I he know. picked That's up a... some kind of knock. Yeah, that's a. That's going to be something dangerous to look for because if they can get him to just win balls in that opponent third, that's the Liverpool way right there. I, I mean, I'm of I'm of two minds with this game. How so? Because one is yes, Curtis Jones looks great. Uh, Salah assists in a goal. Well, again, um, gets his pen. So, uh, Graven Birch looks like. What they wanted him to be. Absolutely. You know, like being solid in the back again. Always. On the other hand, Palmer was not on. That is true. I don't trust Lavia. Uh, I don't trust Jaden Sancho. I don't trust Maduke. You know, and Sala like going against Gusto all night. Yeah, yeah, this is one of those things where this. I don't know. Exactly. If Liverpool should, I I feel like this Liverpool team should have won by more. I don't. I don't feel like it. It was near. Like it should have been nearly as close. <coughs> there was <coughs> plenty of scoring opportunities going both ways. To be honest, uh, and I don't know. I th I think Chelsea actually looked like the better squad. However, um. Liverpool had the better goal scoring threats. I mean, 
I don't know. It was a 50-50 game, to be honest. It could have gone either way. If yeah, Palm... and doesn't that feel weird? Yes. Is that the other half of you? Is that what's your... Yeah. What you're... Like, on one hand, Liverpool beat Chelsea, and obviously, Curtis Jones played well, and Salo played well, and Van Dyke played well, and that's what happens. And then the other hand, it's like, all those teams played well, and it felt 50-50, and... I look at the point totals. I mean, Liverpool's on 21, Chelsea's on 14. Mm-hmm. And this is through eight matches. I mean, that's how big the split is. And it just, it seems like there should be a wider gap between those two teams, and there's not. Which is, again, Liverpool fans, I know they're probably screaming. I still, I just don't know what to make of this team. You know, they've allowed three goals all season. Are they the best defensive team that this has been? Like, I don't think so. Becker has been out for a while. He's going to be. Dyke's getting while. older. I just I've seen stronger defensive teams in this Liverpool team. Sometimes like nothing you have to be strong. You just got to be smart. And maybe they've just gotten smarter. I don't know. Nothing about this team makes sense to me yet. They they're still kind of identity less. If that makes sense, mm. and it's of no fault of theirs, because for the most part, apart from one game against Forest, they've done exactly what they need to do. Mm-hmm. And they're top of the league. And I'm not saying that they don't deserve to be top of the league. I'm saying everyone's talking about the Arnie slot era, and I still don't even know what the hell that is yet. Right. It's kind of still like bleed over from the Klopp era, to be honest. And I'm telling you, the people on the blue side of Manchester are thinking they're going to slap the ever-loving shit out of Liverpool when they play them. Because right now it feels like there's a miles and miles between these two teams. But maybe there's not. Maybe Slot sets his team up in a way, and it's just so different because it's not Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool that my brain doesn't know what to make of it. <laughs> it's like all the same characters, but they're not playing the right parts anymore. Yeah, it could be that. I don't know. I'm not trying to say this team's bad. I'm trying to say no. I don't know. Yeah, you just, there's no real tell to it right now. There's just This team could be a very, very good team. I don't think they have the depth to be the great team. Well, they could be a very good. I mean, I'm actually more confused on their striker situation because they're not starting Nunez anymore. And I, I don't think he should start Jonah down. I, that or they slide Gakpo over. But either way, they didn't do it for this game, this match. So I, I maybe know, they're not going to really do it at all. Slide Gakpo over? Yeah. Why not? He has not impressed me at all. No, I mean, I'm just saying that's a possibility. I'm not saying they should do it. That's the other argument you can make about this team, though. Sazbalai has not looked great. And they still win. So we're so good we're winning in spite of. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good, that's a decent argument to make. I mean, if they still have McAllister and they're pull, pulling him off the bench. Yeah, he came off the bench. Yep, he came off the bench. He came off the bench late, too. That might be because of the international break, but traveling from Argentina, you know, kind of a little bit distancy. Um, but I think the fact that Nunez came on the second Jota got injured tells you that Nunez is going to start. Oh, absolutely. And I I would start Nunez too. The guy's chaos ball. I as as a neutral, love watching the guy. I think he's the most electric and entertaining dude you could put on the field. If I was a supporter, I would lose my mind. And I'm glad I'm not a supporter. I was going to say electric, yes, just because everybody loves a good post ball. Yeah, they do. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those, like, I don't know. Again, you never know what you're going to get with him. His whole team feels like a coin flip. On, like, any given day, it feels like a coin flip. Yeah, where are they winning? Like, where on the field are they winning? Do you know what I mean? Like, what, what? The defensive half, the midfield, mid, yeah, defensive half, defensive third, midfield third, or front third. Where where are they winning? Top right, solid. <laughs> I'm serious. No, he has an no. eight point six and eight point three, six point five against Palace, which was a little bit disappointing, sure. But an eight point five and eight point two, a seven point eight and eight point six and eight point two. It's solid. Oh, that man's on my fantasy team. Is solid doesn't get injured. 
then yeah, they might win the fucking league. Yeah, it's possible. But he's 32 oh, well, years old. And I don't know. He's in amazing shape. I think he's got 2% body fat. There's a conspiracy out there that he actually is not a clutch player. If you oh, look I at his last... I hate this. You hate, hate that? Clutch. I hate the idea of clutch. Oh, sorry. Well, he does seem to fade out towards the back half of the season. I don't know if that's just work rate, and I don't know if that's you know match played over the year, and he just because he's such a reliable player, plays 90 minutes and most of the matches, and he just burns out, or, you know, maybe he does fade out I, when it decides to be clutch time. Yeah. All right, air quotes clutch. Is Kevin De Bruyne clutch or not clutch? Absolutely. How many chances did he need to win a Champions League with City? Three. Four. I was close. I was guessing. Isn't he clutch? I thought he was clutch. A- absolutely. But see, this is my argument, right? Like, the people who are clutch, saying clutch is like saying who has the most RBIs every year in baseball. Do you know who has the most RBIs every year in baseball? The guys who have the most opportunities to hit or get RBIs. Yeah. <laughs> Derek Jeter, clutch player. Is he clutch in the playoffs? Yeah. Sure seems like it. I could pull up highlights that go on for hours about him getting base hits in the playoffs. He was only in the playoffs every single year. <laughs> Like, yeah, you're going to have – it's one of those, like, I, I, for every David Ortiz, holy crap, home run, how, look at how clutch he is. And, yeah, I know you can even make the argument that 2013 World Series that he hit a 1,000 in. Mm-hmm. But you can also find years that he didn't. You know, clutch is, clutch is about opportunities. Yep. And I feel like the whole Sala not being clutch thing stems from they're going 0 for 4 in cup finals. And it's like, yeah, sure, fine. They went over for that year in cup finals. You know what else? They made four cup finals. Mm-hmm. Hey, that that's so. There's not a person alive that wouldn't rather have Mo Salah on their team. Than oh God, I would take Mo Salah in a heartbeat. So don't give me this. You know, always oh, not clutch. That's like one of that's what you say when you can't say anything about someone. That's actually you like after you go after something like that. Yeah, that's like the untangible thing, right? Yeah, you go after the untangible thing that you can't say. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Brady Knight and Stoke. Shut. He's done it everywhere else. I know. I you know? know. He's a great player. Yeah, he, guy single handedly got Egypt back in the World Cup. <laughs> and he did. <clears throat> I'm not, not. He's a great player. I would love to have him. You know, it's like I. I think what you could say is like someone like Palmer. Which and this is what I was saying a couple weeks ago. Not he clutch. is amazing when he's on. Yeah, but he's also one of those coin flip guys. I think he, he was is... half on for the Liverpool. There was a couple shots he had where, if on target, it's a goal. He just couldn't get him on yeah. target, and you know sometimes that happens. I don't think he was completely off. I just think that he's <laughs> just it wasn't quite his match that that particular game that's all and city got themselves a steal stole him or excuse me chelsea got a steal from city my bad they did they did i mean you buy everybody you're gonna get one that's right hey because enzo fernandez ain't starting right now buy him in bushels mikhailo mudrick is not starting right now all right are you arsenal must be glad they dodged that bullet oh hell yeah Hell yeah. well, I mean, at least there was a, there was a thing. There was a thing I saw the other day, and it was uh, oh my, it was a reel on Instagram, and it's Arsenal yelling at Shakhtar, like, yeah. oh my god, why are you so mean? You didn't even let us get that player. You sold the Chelsea's blah blah blah, and it's like, and then you don't even let us score a bunch of goals against you, even though you're crap to let us patter things. And the Shakhtar guy's like, I made sure that you didn't buy the crap player for too much money. And when you guys were incapable of scoring, we own gold for you so that you would get the three <laughs> points. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> That's funny. Mudrick's not even on the bench right now. Nah, Is he I injured? Don't I don't know. I think oh, he... Yes. I, can't, I can't be for certain. I don't have that information pulled up. And I know you're about He to, is... Uh... <coughs> 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 Definitely not sick. I think he's healthier than me. Eh, probably. 
He was in the stands for the Shakhtar Arsenal game. Was he really? Yep, and his market value is down to 40. Oh. God, what a miss. Anyway, yes, Chelsea got a steal for Palmer. Boy, they paid out the nose for everybody else. No. Like like I said, buy them in bushels, like both of us have said. Anyway, um, right. small game, unless you wanted to say something else. Yeah, I just got one trivia thing for you. Okay, hit me. Wolves. Yeah. This season's so weird. Wolves has one point. Can you tell me who they drew against? Um, it was the first match of the season. I could tell you that nope. much. Was it not? Okay. First match of the season was Arsenal. Oh, um, let me think of who. Did they draw against Chelsea? No, nope, they drew against Forest. Oh, Same team oh. that scored. And the only team that's beat Liverpool. Mm. Weird. So if that's not some any given Sunday crap. That's going to be like one of the, the circle of. Yeah, right. The circle of parody. Yes. That, that's going to be right there. It's got to be. Except for it's just a draw. <laughs> well, you know, whatever. Anyway. For them, that's a win at this point. That's how brutal they are. Excuse me. Anyway, moving on to uh, a thing I just made up. It's called Red, Yellow, or In Between. We're going to talk about for a few moments at least because we're slowly running out of time. Um, some of the red cards that had happened this weekend. And we've already talked about Tosin and Saliba and how we feel about those. And one is a correct yellow and the other one is an incorrect red. If you haven't already figured it out, then you weren't listening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know what, what matches you watch, but I also have on here Fulham's red card. Um, and Joachim Anderson picked up a red card. Uh, pulling Ollie Watkins back, I believe, is what happened. And uh, I believe that's a correct red. Because it's a correct red. Yes, it's a correct. He was red. wearing a Fulham shirt. He was wearing a Fulham shirt, and he hurt. He didn't actually hurt anybody, but but he could have. <laughs> uh, Watkins was in on goal. Joachim was actually the last defender. There was nobody around within 10, 15 yards, other than the goalkeeper, and impeded a possible scoring opportunity. And I, I, that's my thing with inhibiting scoring opportunities. It's like, how possible is it? Because nothing's guaranteed. And for everyone complaining, um, Ali was the only one there. Yeah. And it was at the top of the 18-yard box. That being said, I'm not... Mm, I did. <clears throat> All right, so the only reason why I'd be against it, and I'm not sure. saying that it's for sure not a, a red, is Ali Watkins comes from the other side. There, there was no malice, I don't think. No, I don't think so either. It's just, for me, it's there per- needs to be a little either malice or what's the word I'm looking for? Um, recklessness. Ah. And I don't feel that it was necessarily either. But by the letter of the law, that is a red. Yeah. Because if he doesn't do that, Ollie's clear away on goal. Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. And that one I feel is a little bit more. That This is why I think it's a little bit more of a red than the other two. Or the one, realistically, that was actually given a red. is because it wasn't 45 yards away. It was 18. So there's more of an opportunity for score than somebody who's farther away anyway well, um, uh, Watkins had cl- also clearly beat him oh yeah like that that part was over for sure um did you happen to catch Muhammad Kudus and his that red was card? the one against Nielsen or Nelson uh was it the against second Reece? yellow right 
Yeah, I think he pushed him in the. Uh, no, they went to VAR and then they overturned the yellow and gave him a straight red. Really? Yes. So he did a few oh, things that uh, I was kind of surprised that they didn't. And it must have been compound. Oh, we're talking about a different game. I was talking about the second red card from the Villa Fulham match. Oh, oh, that's Jaden Philogene. Um, I think the second yellow was a little soft, but whatever. I, 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 whatever. That's all I can say to that. It's a foul. I don't think it's a yellow. That's kind of how I feel. I don't know what else it would be though, because why are you even fouling him that way? I. That's my point. That's why I don't. That's why I don't care that it happened because it was kind of it was a reckless foul. And <coughs> if they gave him a card, I'm okay with giving a card. And then it ended up being a red. That's your consequence for it. You shouldn't have done it. Um, Muhammad Kudus, though, took down. Um, I just watched this. Ah, well. Took down the player. Then went and kicked him in the back. Then went and... When they stood up, oh, it was Mickey Vandeven. That's who it was. When Vandeven went to approach him, being all like, why the hell did you kick me in the back, bro? <laughs> Kudus pushed him in the face. So then the ref gave him a yellow. But they didn't see Kudus also push, must be Reese, in the face again. No, not Reese. It was a uh, different. Reese Nelson was a guy who got the second yellow. Oh. Guy who caused a foul for the second yell. Ah, uh, uh, oh, Reese plays for Fulham. Never mind. Yep. I'm sorry. Um, oh, he pushed uh, Sar in the face. That's who it was. And then VAR saw that, went back, was like, yo, we need to give this guy a red. I fully think that's a red. Hands to the face is a no go, guys. We, we know this. Unless you're a city player, hands to the face is a no go. <laughs> you choke people <laughs> out. Who cares? <laughs> Hey, you know what? This is a great example of VAR being used correctly. Absolutely. Or being used at all. <laughs> it was fun watching Richarlison just flop. I know. That was, I was like, what? The you second doing? kick, the second kick on Vandeven. The first was, one, he was clearly going for the ball. The second one, yeah. he was clearly trying to kick his ass. Absolutely. I was like, what are you doing, my guy? Richarlison running in and having his own player push Kudus into him and then dropping. Like a sack of potatoes is amazing. That's a Brazilian for you. Easy. Oh my god! If he, if he wasn't Brazilian, he'd be Portuguese. Never on my team. Never ever on my team. Well, he's got the aura of a. I don't know. It's terrible. His ter his aura <laughs> is terrible. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it again. That was fun. It's <laughs> um, so great. It's so great. And then, <laughs> the final, yeah, the it's final, like the butt fumble. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. The final one I have is uh, Southampton's Ryan Fraser um, in the 73rd minute. And that was a denial opportunity for Jamie Vardy on the front post where I can't remember which player <coughs> headed it or kicked it towards the goalkeeper. Goalkeeper attempted save. And then... Um, Fraser pulled Vardy's jersey, preventing him from actually reaching the ball. And I mean, we're talking like within the six yard box. And by within the six yard box, I mean two yards from the goal line prevention. And that ended up being a red card pen where Lester actually needed that goal to draw and then eventually scored in the 97th minute to win that match. I, I, was at a gasp for that. I was like, "Oh my goodness, it was crazy!" But uh, yeah, that was some good like champions championship football. Uh, it was it was gritty. It was a gritty match. Uh, my this... only problem with the Fraser red card. Uh huh. Why did that have to go to VAR? I don't know. It was pretty clear. You can that see he... him. The jersey's getting pulled away from him. I don't. This... Yeah, it That's was pretty bad. Cut and dry. That's cut uh -huh. and dry. So we got a. Uh, a card that should have been a yellow. We had a card that was a yellow. We had a card that's kind of in between. We have a, I, and then two clear reds. I, I would, I would argue 
Okay, so Frazier's definitely a red. Who's Absolutely. definitely a red. Honestly, yeah. probably should have been a double red. You should get a red for kicking Van Devan in the ass because that was – I don't care. He looked down, got angry on his face, and then kicked as hard as he could. I know. It was really – like what are you um doing? and then yeah you can't hands to the face it's yep. that simple I don't care about the Richarlison thing your own player pushed him into you no um Fraser's definitely a red yep talked about that I think that Fulham's is I'm a- okay I'm okay with the second yellow oh you're talking about um again Jaden's yeah I'm okay yeah. with the second yellow yeah I too. think it's it's stupid. Like, don't yeah, do that. You opened yourself up for it. Yeah. I um, I'm okay with the red against Ollie just because that was more of a clear in. And then, yeah, the other one should have been yellows. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Shine shake on that one. So that's think- it. The only the only problem that we have is that Kudu should have had two reds. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, any matches you're looking forward to in match day time? Because... I'm thinking uh, the possibility of either Lopetegui getting canned or uh, maybe, if we're lucky, Eric Ten Hag or Gary O'Neill. Either options are available. I think I'm I'm really the only match that's intriguing. Leicester City Forest, just because I want to see if Forest is actually that good. Um, uh, oh, Villa I'm Bournemouth, gonna... just because of how good Bournemouth has been playing, I want to see them. I want to see them line up against Villa. I still think Villa should win, but obviously everyone thought Arsenal was going to have an easy win last week. So who knows? Um, Guys, I've been in the wrong week. I was have... on match day ten, not uh, nine, and I said match day nine earlier. Oh, that's funny. This is um, Brighton and Hove Albion is probably going to get Gary O'Neill canned. Absolutely. City Southampton will probably be 6 0. Everton Fulham could be interesting, but I don't know yet. Uh, Chelsea Newcastle. I don't know. Newcastle got beat 1 0 at home last match day. They did. By. Who was it? Who was it? Brighton. In St. James's Park. Mm -hmm. You know? And West Ham United, the United v. United, eh. I think Arsenal Liverpool is where all the fireworks is going to be, and I think it's going to be a lot of fireworks. I expect that match to end up 3-2. That's going to be a fun match. Th- those matches are fun, anyway. I could see a 3-2, 2-1 kind of win, to be honest. I, I could see a, a 2-1 win for somebody. I, I don't. I could see I... 3-2, or I could see a 2 all where one team dominated the first half and the other team just dominates the second and you can't get anything in between. Any red cards for those teams? Oh, God, bro. Do we know who the... Oh, it's Anthony Taylor. So... <laughs> so... Liverpool's losing. <laughs> At least it's not Chris Kavanaugh. Who's Chris Kavanaugh, man? It's David Coote. That was close. Craig Pawson. Madly. I'm working on it, guys. Hold on. God, he really should not be a ref at all. I hate that guy. I hate him about as much as I hate Fulham. Is he not? Chris Kavanaugh not on? That's what I'm wondering. Nope, he's not. He's not. He might be on a VAR, so he might give it a red from the VAR booth. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) Which you can't do, but apparently you can. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know anymore, man. I don't know either. Here's what I know. I'm going to go to bed. You should go to bed. Being sick. And if you have made it this far, we appreciated it. And thank you. Please follow, like, subscribe. We absolutely love you guys. Also, don't forget to go to the beer garden. I know I haven't mentioned them in a long time, and I feel really bad that I haven't. Please go check out the beer garden at all of their locations. Um, Rhett's, Rhett and I are mostly at the uh, Wolf Road. Wolf Road, if they ever had Broadway that. in Broadway Albany. in Albany, and um, sometimes yeah. Schenectady. Only if also uh, the Broadway. Syracuse Gooners hang out at the Syracuse location. 
There you go. And if you're an Arsenal fan, go check out Rhett's uh, Gooners group there. So, anyway. We got got new hats. Oh, you got new hats. Look at that. See? Merch. You guys get merch if you join. And also probably pay for that merch. But that's not the point. The point is, have a good night, everybody. Don't forget to dip your bartenders. Bye. Well, guys, that was an episode of Swinging at Shins. We appreciate you for coming out and listening to us. If you guys want to hear or see more, we have links in the description below. We hope to hear from you soon and hear more about what you have to say.